When did the Prime Minister lose his way? When did it happen? The federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act to address the blockades and occupations. Right here I have a copy of the Emergencies Act. In the past few months, the government invoked this act for the very first time in Canadian history. And this law gives the Government of Canada the ability to curb the civil liberties of Canadians. The government used the Emergencies Act to suspend the right to protest and to seize the bank accounts of those involved with the protests without just cause. This is really unprecedented. I know we've been using that word a lot lately with the pandemic, it's unprecedented. Well, it's really unprecedented that the government used the Emergencies Act. This week in Parliament, the Government of Canada has fulfilled a requirement of the Emergencies Act, which means that they had to call a public inquiry within 60 days after the revocation of the Emergencies Act. So they basically waited until the last possible minute to appoint a commissioner to get this inquiry started. Now the purpose for this inquiry is to hold the government accountable to see if it was one appropriate to use the Emergencies Act in the first place and to look at the measures that the government used in the Emergencies Act to say if they were appropriate in their use against Canadians. The government announced that they had appointed Justice Rouleau, who I have no reason to believe is not a respected uh, judge in this country. Um, but we don't really have a lot of information about who this judge is, what his background is. I asked the Minister of Public Safety, what were the qualifications? Uh, what was the process by which this judge was chosen? Because for all we know, they could have just picked this guy's name out of a hat. What qualifications were required? How many candidates were considered? He's familiar, familiar with the principles of ensuring that there is a balance between cabinet confidences and making sure that he has the information that he needs to review. His answer was very telling. One of the answers that he gave is that the judge understood the need for a balance between transparency and respecting cabinet confidentiality. There is a balance between cabinet confidences and making sure that he has the information that he needs to... All over the course of this past week, uh, conservatives have been demanding the government tell us whether or not they're going to give the information and the evidence that they use to justify the Emergencies Act. Because if we don't have access to the evidence that showed why invoking the act was necessary, then we're never going to know if the government was right or wrong in invoking the act. It really uh, concerns me because if they ask the justice during the uh, recruitment process, are you going to ask us for secret cabinet documents? And if the answer of the judge was no, I will not ask for cabinet documents, then I think it really undermines the whole independent part of this public inquiry. The other thing that I think is uh, very concerning, and this is, we've been asking questions about this, and you know, the media has also been asking questions about this, so you know it's bad when the media is even asking and going after the government on this, is that the Emergencies Act in itself states that the inquiry has to look into, as I said, the circumstances leading up to the use of the act and the measures used by the government. No more, no less. That's the mandate given under the Emergencies Act. But then the government also puts in some other points that are not in the Emergencies Act. They say that the commissioner must look into the protesters, their motivations, their actions, their backing, must look into foreign involvement, crowdsourcing funding, what were the actions of police in the lead up, how did the police handle the situation, but noticeably absent was any direction to the commissioner to actually investigate how the government came to the conclusion that the Emergencies Act was appropriate and how the government came to the conclusion that the specific actions that they took, shutting down protests, freezing bank accounts, was the most appropriate action uh, to deal with the protests. I've called it political interference because it should be up to the commissioner who uses the act as his guide to decide what is and what is not relevant to his investigation. Now, the commissioner may very well decide that he needs to look into the protesters and their motivations. He needs to look into the crowdfunding, needs to look into ideologically motivated violent extremism, needs to look into the police. He very well might on his own decide that those are very important things to look at. But for this liberal government to politically interfere by directing that the commissioner look at these things in the first place indicates to me, and I think to all Canadians, it's apparent to see that this government has a vested interest in trying to control the outcome of this inquiry. Today, we as parliamentarians, the government, the commissioner, the opposition parties, uh, members such as myself, we are making history in this country because we are setting the precedent 
on how this act will be used in the future. We're going to fight to ensure that we have a vigorous defense of Canadian civil liberties. We're going to fight to ensure that we hold this government accountable. And if they're going to do everything in their power to ensure that they don't have to be accountable to Canadians, we want to make sure that each and every one of you can see it for what it really is a government that is trying to hide the truth from Canadians. Thanks for watching. I hope you appreciated this breakdown of what's been happening in Parliament this week. I'm looking forward to doing more of these videos. Please uh, consider subscribing if you want to get more content like this. Thanks for watching.